do one from, I'm sorry, I was going to do um, one. So we can do two and three and four and four. So with two, this is asking you, what is the y value when x is 3? So g of 3, I look at the x value, I find that y value is 1. For number 3, it's asking to find the values, the range values of these three numbers. So we're going to put those three in. And then I would figure out what each piece equals. So the negative p squared would give me 4. The negative 3 times negative 2 would be a positive 6. The 1 half times 4 would be 2. This would be 7. So that would be 9. So f of negative 2 equals 9. And then I would go on and do the next. So in this case, the 3 squared would give me 9. The negative 3 times 3 would be 9. Uh, negative 9, sorry. And then the plus 1. The 1 half times 9 would be 9 halves, or 4.5. And this would be negative 8. So that would end up being negative 3.5. And then the last one, 8. We'll do that too. So the 8 squared would give me 64. The negative 3 times 8 would be a negative 24. 1 half times 64 is 32. And then that would be 9. So f of 8 is 9. And then because our domain was given to us in this format with the set notation code brackets, we're going to put our answers the same way, least to greatest. Because there are two nines, we're only going to put that once. And that would be our range. What questions do we have on that? Four was a little bit more challenging because we had to find the value of k and then go back and find h of negative four. So this tells us h of one equals negative five. So if all of my x values are one, I know my y value is negative five. So I'm going to replace h of x with negative five, and every time I see an x, I'm going to put in one. And this is going to help me solve for k, because this would just be 1. k times 1 is just k. Negative 2 times 1 is just negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. And if I solve for k and subtract 3, k is negative 3. So that's half of it. We found the value of k. Now we can use that to find h of negative 4. So now in every x value, I'm going to put in negative 4. I'm 
I'm putting in that k value negative 8. And now we can simplify. This will give me 16. This will give me a positive 32. This will give me a negative 32. The negative 32 and positive 32 would cancel. So h of negative 4 equals 5. questions on here. We took what was given and put that into the values. I just wanted to remind you all, just in case I forget later, that next Wednesday is the last day I'm taking retake work. So next Wednesday is the last day to do retake work. Next Thursday, if your retake work is done, is the last day to do retakes and turning missing, turn in missing work. So keep that in mind for Martin Third One. Today, we're going to do our last part of Unit 4. So everyone should have notes that look like these. Maddie, did your calculator start working? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right, so the last part of this, go ahead. The last part of these notes are going to go back to scatter plots, and we're going to revisit definitions and what those mean, but also do more with them. So let's go through some definitions real quick. Alright, um, notice that our objectives, I can use technology um, to determine whether something fits the relationship, I can determine the equation of best fit. I can use regression methods. So we'll talk about more what those mean here in a minute. Scatter plots are used to determine whether or not two variables are related. A trend is when a change in one variable affects the other. I'm going to let you fill out this one after we do um, So trends help us make sense of the world around us and help us make predictions. We've used correlation and association before. Similar, they all mean the same thing. A blank trend occurs if one variable increases when the other variable increases. What type of trend would that be? Positive. This trend is much like a line with a positive slope. A blink trend occurs if one variable decreases when the other variable increases. Negative. This trend is much like a line with a negative slope. Then there's one other type. There is blank blink between the number of newspapers sold and the temperature in the following example. What type, uh, there was one other type of trend or correlation, no correlation. They're not related to each other at all. Okay. On the back, there's a table that has those definitions again. So if you forget, they're there. Another term used to describe two sets of data and that have a connection or relationship is a correlation. And that's for both. Well. 
Um, we've talked about this before that correlations can be positive and strong, uh, sorry, positive and negative or no correlations. They can also be strong and weak. So we'll look more into how here today. So the next page just has more scatter plot, um, remembering how to do that stuff so you guys can practice out in your own time. Go to the back of the next page, look at these examples. And we'll just do a few of these. So the number of hours a person has driven and the number of miles driven. So that be positive, negative, or no correlation. Positive, because those would go up together or down together. If you're not driving at all, then you don't have miles driven. The number of siblings a student has and the grade they have in math class. No correlation. The age of a car and the value of a car. Negatives. So usually the older a car is, the value goes down, unless it's an antique, so that's an outlier. One more. The number of years a person went to school and their income. Positive. Typically positive. There are outliers in that situation. Okay. And you guys can look at some of the others. Go ahead to the next page. So before we get into the actual what are we doing with this, we're going to review some function notation. If I have this table, I have these x values, I'm going to put these x values into this function. I'm going to do that by uh, putting that number in for x and figuring out what that is. What would that be? We're going to fill out the rest of the table. We'll do the same thing for negative 1. What would that be? Negative 7. If I put 0 in, what would that be? Negative 4. If I put 1 in, what would that be? One, and then if I put two in, positive two. So in this, there's some pattern. As these numbers go up, what's happening with my y values? It's what? I just didn't hear what the word you said. It's increasing. Okay, by what? Three. And that's because of the slope. The slope is positive and it's going up, so I would have some positive um, correlation between these. And I can tell that because my slope is positive. So all those things coming back together. We'll leave the other one if you want to do that at a later time to do that. Now, so when we did scatter plots, scatter plots before, we were just plotting a bunch of data, looking at the correlations, their relationship, talking about it. Now we're going to find an equation that best fits the data. So this would be a line that goes through the majority of the data or that the data is surrounded around. So before we do anything, we're going to reset our calculators. Second plus seven, one, two. Then we're going to, um, on your notes, has all of the instructions for what we're about to do. So if you get lost, make sure you pay attention to those. But before we start to put this stuff into the calculator, we want to determine which of these in this table is our x, which is y. 
So if I have time and hours and grade, would the time depend on the grade or would the grade depend on the time? Yes, the grade would depend on the time. So that grade would be Y. Our time would be X. Time in general is usually X. So then in your calculator, you're going to go into stat, which is right next to the arrows. You should be on the edit. You're going to hit one or enter. And you should see something that looks like this. We're going to type in the numbers by hitting whatever the number is. You can hit enter. Or you can type in the number and then go down. So go ahead and start filling in that entire table. other one just arrow over. Use the right arrow. Once you have all of your numbers in, they should line up like this. Anyone not there? back into stat, and then we're going to go over to the right to calculate, and then which of these things do we think we're going to use? On your notes. The fourth one, um, because we haven't talked about the others though. There are two linear regressions, but we want the one that looks more like our y equals mx plus b, where in this case a is m, but we want the fourth one. So you can either go down the four and hit enter, or just hit four. You can just hit four, or go down to four and hit enter. And then you should be on something that looks like this. Anyone not there? This, is in, this all is in step two. So in step two, it says scroll down to store regression equation is what that stands for. And then this will help us find information and do things with the equation later. So I'm going to hit alpha green trace at the top, alpha trace. You get a menu that looks like this. You can really choose whichever of these you want. I'm just going to choose the first one, so enter. And then after you have that, hit enter two more times. Anyone not get those numbers? And 
one L cat number of members. Okay. On the top of the next page, it's asking for the line of best fit. That is this. You just found your line of best fit that best fits this data. So we're going to put three decimal places. So y equals 6.012, x plus 53.61, we're going to round to 6. So I'll show you what this looks like on the calculator, but I don't want you to do this so you don't get confused or whatever. Um, so just watch for a second. So this is the line we just found with the data that was already in there, and I can see that this line is surrounded by these points, so it best fits this data. Now, to answer the other questions, predict the given grade for a student who studied for zero hours. If it gave us zero hours, is that X or is that Y? X. So we can do one of two things. I'm going to show you how to do this in the calculator, but also you can do it by hand. You can always do this by hand. So if this is x, I would put that in for x. And I could function notation, I put that in for x to find my y. So this would be 0. My y value would be this, 53.616. If it says to round, pay attention to that. I'm just going to put that as a motion. You could do that for the next one, but I'm going to show you how to do that one in the calculator. So this part only works if you did that store regression. If you didn't do that, this one won't work. So you're going to go into the table, second graph. And here you should be able to see, okay, the same number we just found when I put when x is 0, y is 53.616. The next one asks for 6 hours. So if I look at when x is 6, y is 89.689. Or we can round. 6 is 9. Okay. For the last part, Again, you can set this up algebraically, and then I'll show you how to do that one in the calculator also. So this one is asking how many hours do we need to study to get greater than 100. So now we're given the grade, y, so that's where that's going to go. And we're now solving for x. So I would subtract, go ahead and subtract that, tell me what that is. Everyone should be subtracting that. You were close. Point 
And then divide. What is x? So that would be our answer up here. Um, hours. You want to label. Now I'm going to show you how to do that same thing on the calculator. So if we go back and you should already be on your table. I'm going to go back to the table. If I'm looking for when is my grade greater than 100, well, I know at 8, if I just wanted a whole number, works. If I wanted that specific 7.715, I'm going to do this. So everyone do this with me. Go into second window, windows at the top, second window. And I'm going to change this to 7, because I know between 7 and 8 is where that's going to go over 100. And instead of counting by 1s, I want this to count by 0.5, so I'm going to change that. And then I'm going to go back to the table and look at that. So second graph. So now, now I can see that between 7.5 and 8, it's going to go over 100. So I'm going to change that one more time. Go back to second window. And now I want this to be 7.5. And I'm going to change this to 0.1 instead. And then go back to the table, second graph. So now I can see at 7.8, which is 7.71. So between 7.7 and 7.8, it definitely goes over 100. I could keep going back and changing that to 0 0.01, 0 0.001 to find that exact decimal. If I wanted to, I'm not going to do that today, but you could in your free time if you want. To just put the calculator back to normal, I'm going to go back, second window, and just change this back to 7 and back to 1. Did you have any questions in general, specific, on the calculator, how we find that on the calculator? Now I'm going to show you the same thing on Desmos. So go ahead and open your iPad. If you have something in there already, go ahead and close that out. So there is a table on your notes, that's the one we're going to use. To add a table on Desmos, you're going to hit the plus and add the table. And you're going to start putting in all the values. If it's blurry, I'm going to type them up here, then you can look up here. So make sure you have those numbers. Some of yours may have this, some may not, but if you happen to see this, 
So you could use this right now for practice, but you need to be practicing what I'll show you in a moment because this function won't be on the SOL this year, it'll be on the next year. But if you were practicing and use this, you'll see some menu at the bottom that you could choose what type of regression you're using and then it would give you that equation and all the things for this. But I'm going to show you how to actually find that if you don't have it. If you don't have it, no worries. So with this, you need to keep in mind your equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, but we're going to alt, uh, alter that. So notice that in your table, this is x1 and y1. So in your equation, you're going to use x1 and y1. Instead of the equa the equals, we're going to use a squiggly line. So I want you to type this. y1, go into the ABC, find the squiggly line, it's called a tilde, mx1 plus b. Now the order of yours might be switched, but you should still have these numbers. So you will not have those numbers. So we're going to write this equation in the next line. y equals this x plus this. Now, you won't see anything first. But if we go back to the table and hit the little magnifying glass, your graph will appear. In Desmos, if we're trying to find something, so if I'm looking at the table values I don't have, let's say I wanted to find when x is 50, I would type in x equals 50, and I would zoom out until I found those two lines that cross, and that would be my y value, that 821.8. And I could do the same thing for a y value. If I wanted to find when y is 100, I could type in y equals 100, find where those two lines cross, and that x value would be my answer. Any questions on how Desmos works? Anyone? prefer using the calculator or want to still use a calculator over Desmos? Okay, so I want you to try the next one using the calculator or Desmos, whichever. But before you start putting it into the into Desmos or the calculator, wait one second. So when you see something with years, you have to change how the years look. So anything with years, you're going to put zero for the first one. That's going to be your initial year. And then you're going to count how many years has it been since the initial year. So from 1920 to 25 would be how many years? Five. 
and then you're still going back to the original. So from 1920 to 1930, 10, 1920 to 35, 15, and so on and so forth. So in this example, I can see each of these are counted by five, so I can just count by five. But we don't want to assume that. We want to make sure that we actually count because sometimes they may skip a year or go off one year. So make sure you're actually counting. But in this one, I can see that. So go ahead and fill that out. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. So we're not going to use the years. I'm going to use those numbers instead. Now you can go ahead and start putting that data in. Be very careful because there are a lot of decimals and it's very easy to miss one or make a mistake. Um, also, in Desmos, if you start putting in your X values and it recognizes a pattern, you can just hit enter a bunch of times. 80. Okay. The Y values, you can't do that with. You have to put each one there. Make sure your numbers line up. If they don't, you miss one. doing this over here. Okay, before we answer the life expectancy in 2010, and I'm going to look at where do those two lines cross, and that would be my answer, 77.03 years. So I want you to practice. That can be more problems in the notes. You do have adult math on this. That's due tomorrow. So you can work on either or. Um, or if you need to finish your test, you can come do that. But no retake work today.